You've probably seen erythritol on the label of sugar-free gum, protein bars, keto snacks. For years, it's been marketed as one of the safest sweeteners. Virtually zero calories, diabetic friendly, and even good for teeth. But last year, there was a major study in Nature Medicine which made headlines after finding that people with higher levels of erythritol in their blood had a greater risk of blood clots, heart attacks, and strokes. So, does erythritol actually damage your heart, or is the story more complicated? Now, as a dentist, I'm interested in this because sugar substitutes aren't just about weight loss or blood sugar, they're part of how we manage cavities, gum disease, and oral health. And when a study like this hits the news, I really want to know what the data really says. So here's where the headlines came from. Now, in early 2023, there was a paper published in Nature Medicine, which is one of the world's top medical journals. And I'll link the study down below if you want to have a further read yourself later on. But basically, the research followed more than 4,000 participants in the United States and Europe. And most of them were already at high risk uh, of cardiovascular disease. We're talking diabetes, obesity, high blood pressure, or history of cardiovascular disease. And study used something called untargeted metabolomics, which is basically a white chemical scan to the blood. And they measured hundreds of different compounds, and one compound that stood out was erythritol. So people with a higher level of erythritol in, in their blood were more likely to suffer a major cardiovascular event over the next three years. And that means strokes, heart attacks, blood clots, and to dig deeper, the researchers ran lab experiments. They took human platelets, the blood cells that basically helped stop bleeding by clotting them together and exposed erythritol in a dish. And the results was that the platelets were more sticky. They showed increased aggregation, which in theory could increase the risk of clot formation. So put these two findings together, the observational link in people and the platelet experiments in the lab, and you can see why this hit the headlines. And you might have seen phrases like erythritol linked to heart attacks or sugar substitute may raise the risk of stroke. And if you're wondering at why I'm looking at this as a dentist, it's because erythritol isn't just another sweetener. In the dental world, it's currently being studied as one of the safer options for reducing cavities and plaque, which makes a potential heart risk even more surprising. Now let's look closer at what this study actually showed and just as important, what it didn't. First, the researchers did not track how much erythritol people were consuming. There was no surveys, no food diaries, nothing about gum, toothpaste, or sweeteners. And all they did measure was the concentration of erythritol already in the blood at one point in time. And the second thing is your body itself can make erythritol on its own. It's produced through a natural pathway called the pentose phosphate pathway, which becomes more active in people with metabolic stress, like insulin resistance, obesity, or diabetes. That means a high blood level of erythritol doesn't necessarily mean someone was chewing gum all day or baking with it. And it might just be a marker of poor metabolic health. In fact, the study authors wrote here themselves, and I'll quote, is it remains unclear whether circulating erythritol levels are due to dietary intake or endogenous production under metabolic stress. And the third thing is the association they found was observational. People with higher blood erythritol levels had more cardiovascular events, but that doesn't prove cause and effect. Was it the erythritol itself or was it the fact that these people already had metabolic disease and were more likely to have a heart attack anyways? The study can't answer that. And that's why interpreting this research is so tricky because it raises a red flag. It doesn't tell us whether erythritol from chewing gum or toothpaste poses any real world risk. And alongside the human data, the researchers also ran experiments in the lab. And that's where things sound alarming if you don't look closely. Because what they did is they took human platelets, the tiny blood cells that help stop bleeding by forming clots, and exposed them to erythritol in a dish. And the result was that the platelets became more sticky. They clumped together more easily, which could, in theory, make clotting more likely. That was the proposed mechanism. Maybe erythritol increases the risk of blood clots by making platelets more reactive. But here's the catch. The study was an in vitro experiment. Platelets studied in isolation outside the complexity of a human body. And the concentration of erythritol they used was much higher than what you'd get from chewing a piece of gum or even a few mints, and the study's own methods section notes that. So yes, the lab data gives us a possible mechanism, but it doesn't prove that eating normal amounts of erythritol in your daily life will cause clotting. It's a clue, but not a conclusion. Now here's the part that didn't make the headlines, but it changes how we interpret all of this. Because the people in the study weren't young and healthy. The majority already had risk factors. So obesity, type 2 diabetes, high blood pressure, or history of cardiovascular disease, 
And these were the same conditions where your body is more likely to make erythritol naturally through the pentose phosphate pathway, which I mentioned earlier. So high blood erythritol may not mean you were eating lots of sugar-free products. It might just be a marker that your metabolism was already under stress. And the authors even acknowledged this, writing that elevated erythritol levels may reflect underlying metabolic dysfunction rather than dietary intake. And here's where the context matters. When we talk about erythritol in dentistry, for example, we're usually talking about gum, mint, toothpaste, and these provide very small amounts, nowhere near the high concentrations used in lab experiments or seen in people consuming large amount uh, as a bulk sweetener in keto-friendly foods, for example. In fact, from a dental perspective, erythritol is one of the most promising sugar substitutes we have. So there was a three-year randomized trial, which I'll link below, and they found that children who used erythritol had fewer cavities and less plaque compared to those with xylitol or sorbitol. That said, the evidence is still limited and more long-term research is still needed. So here we have two different stories. In the mouth, erythritol looks promising. In the bloodstream, high-risk patients, it might be a red flag. That's why the real answer here isn't black and white. So does erythritol damage your heart? And based on the current evidence, we can't say that. There's currently no evidence suggesting that small amount in gum or toothpaste are harmful. The Nature Medicine study raised the concern, but doesn't prove causation. It showed an association, mainly in people who were already at high risk, but it didn't measure how much erythritol they were actually consuming. For teeth, for example, the evidence is still looking positive. Erythritol reduces plaque, lowers cavity risk, and is very well tolerated. For general health, the science is early and we need more research before making sweeping claims. But the erythritol here is not the whole story. There was another sweetener called xylitol, which I personally use, and it's also been linked to some heart risk. And I made a whole video on that. If you want to watch it, I'll link it down below. And thank you for watching.